Hello there. Today we're back in Greenville taking a look at my top three favorite convertibles for under $25,000. So let's get right into it. Let's start off here in the 2014-2012 Viking Abundant. Ab Ab Abundant? I don't know how to pronounce that. This is the T5 Inscription Direct trim, which is the highest trim. It's about $22,000. And before I started this video, apparently I forgot to put the convertible top down, but the reason I chose this car is because there's a lot of detail to this car, especially on the inside, but let's start out with the lighting on the outside. Um, startup is pretty basic, but here are your brake lights, turn signals, reverse lights, oh, turn signals look cool, turn signals on the front, of course you do have mirror turn signals, headlights, and your running lights in the back, which are very small. And then here on the inside, there's a lot of detail to the thing. So you can see all of the seats are fully 3D, and the door panels aren't 3D, but that's not really a big deal. The steering wheel here looks very cool. Of course, all the gauges and everything lights up. There's this cool pop-up screen up here, and while there are some de decals like this stuff, and this stuff, and this stuff, and this stuff, it all is still very detailed. So let's try this thing. And my favorite feature about convertibles is the fact that you can actually drive them in first person mode like I am right now. So that's pretty cool. Right now there's a little bit of a texture glitch with these decals all around the car, so that's the reason you may be able to see the one on the left there glitching a little bit. Uh, I just realized that before I started this video there's a little bit of a glitch. I love the interior color on this thing though, it's kind of like a tan or it's kind of like a sandstone or a beige color. It looks good. This thing doesn't have AEB, but of course does have ABS, traction control, and automatically automatic stability control. And overall, from an interior perspective, the handling on this thing is pretty good. Visibility is alright. Oops. Visibility is pretty good. I wish the mirrors did work. That would be super cool. Probably be laggy, but it'd be really cool. Visibility is good. And driving in first person mode, this thing is really fun, actually. It's pretty fast, too. This being the top of the line, T5's trim it packs quite a punch here. Yeah, this is number one here, the newest car on the list. But let's get off to number two, which is the 2007 Jupiter Orbit in the red light trim in the color ruby red, and with these chrome wheels. Now this is the Pontiac Solstice, I believe. Or, is this Chrysler? No, I think this is Pontiac. I'm pretty sure. But the lighting on this thing is super detailed, so your running lights in the front look really cool. Then you have your turn signals, which are LED in the front and the back. Your running lights, which are very cool. Of course, headlights in the front here and your running lights in the front. And then um, reverse lights down at the bottom here, very detailed. The horn. And then on the inside, same thing here. This is a manual car, so the interior, of course, is very detailed. The steering wheel goes back and forth. These seats aren't nearly as detailed, but they still look pretty cool. And then your door panel there is fully 3D. Gauge cluster is 3D. Now this is a big, big D decal, but that's okay. Of course, your manual shifter there um, with the handbrake and the uh, Jupiter or Pontiac logo there, which looks very cool. And you can see the three pedals at the bottom there. Let's drive this thing. Of course, when you put on your headlights, more things light up on this thing than before. Even the window switches on the door there light up, so that, that is a cool feature. The climate control lights up too, and same with the gauge cluster, but we're already at our top speed here of 116 miles per hour, which is not the fastest, but this car is faster than the Volvo, for sure. And you can see pretty good visibility at the sides and the back. Again, I do wish the mirrors worked, but it's okay. And this one is a soft top. The Volvo was a hard top, which looked a little bit off, but it was still kind of cool. Yeah, same with this thing. The handling inside is great. It's super fun to drive in first person, except for my cursor there. That's a little annoying. But it's super fun to drive in first person here, and the handling still is great. 
like I said, you do still have great visibility. And you can easily drive this thing in first person. And I personally think it's more fun to drive convertibles in first person. So this one is also about 20 grand here, so a little bit expensive. But it's not over 25 grand, so that's why I put it on this list. Our final car here is an expected one, the 1990 Mazuku Laguna, which is the 1990 Mazda Miata. And yes, the reason I chose this thing was not because of the detail on the inside, because it's not super detailed on the inside, but the only reason was because of the good lighting. Brake lights, turn signals, reverse lights, running lights in the back, pop-up headlights in the front, of course. And then your turn signals in the front there. The horn is also pretty funny. But the interior is not the greatest. It is fully 3D here. You can see your manual shifter. Um, the seats look okay. and But mostly everything is just a decal. So this is all decal. Plus the textures are kind of messed up and it looks a little funky. But yeah, the steering wheel is in an entire decal everything is basically decal plus there's no pedals so they are actually is there oh yeah there is they're just very hidden when you turn the lights on though it looks very cool though the hazard light is lit up Basically every light inside here is lit up, so that is a very, very cool touch. And same with this Miata here. It's a Miata, so it's not exactly the fastest, and it also doesn't have ABS, so when you slam on the brakes... At higher speeds, <laughs> the wheels lock up and the car just slides. And yeah, it may not have the most detailed interior, but this thing is fun to drive. And I'm not sure if it's just because it's a convertible and all the convertibles in green will seem fast and they're fun to drive, or if it's the fact that this thing just might be pretty fast in green wheel. Yes, your feet do stick at the bottom, which is a little sad, and you do have an extremely awkward seating position from the outside and the inside. Pretty iffy visibility at the front here, but at the back it's level you can see over your own seat which is cool but yeah overall this thing surprisingly handles well and it's also surprisingly fast 110 mile per hour top speed is pretty good and yes it doesn't have abs but that's okay i'm honestly surprised by all of these cars here in greenville i did not expect any of these to actually be this fast or be this fun to drive but Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did smash the like button, please consider subscribing. Go join the Discord server. I'm Scarface. The link will be in the description and in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.